Hi, this is Cheryl Clark from Phenomenal Writing and PhenomenalSpeeches.com. I wanted to share with you a very quick video and webinar with tips and tools, uh, best practices for communicating during this pandemic from a leadership perspective. I hope that you find it useful. And if you have any questions or would like me to go into a deeper dive with anything that I mentioned in the presentation, please let me know. I'm happy to help you and um, I hope you find it very valuable. Thanks so much. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is going to be a very brief presentation. I hope to give you some tips for better communication throughout this crisis and help you, you know, really think about some things that you may or may not have thought of already or perhaps forward to someone who else might find this useful. So the first thing I want to at least cover are the basics. So, you know, as of today, Sunday evening, um, the worldwide cases are 686,032 people here in the United States. It's 125,099 cases of coronavirus, 2,238 deaths, um, and 3,238 people have recovered as of the last update of these statistics. As you can see from the map, as we all know, it's all over the world at this point except for Antarctica. So I wanted to just start with the numbers and the visual representation of what we're dealing with before I jump in. And the next thing is the to talk about the specifics of what we're going to dive into today. And the first thing is defining effective crisis response. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about are, you know, three questions to ask before you do any communication, but especially communicating right now during a time of upheaval and, uh, and turmoil and uncertainty. And then after that, I'm going to discuss um, understanding your audience, what they're thinking about right now, what they're looking for right now, and, you know, best ways to address them. So that's pretty much in a nutshell what I wanted to discuss with this presentation. So I think that the foundation of... Um, communication response during a time like this is to first fully understand the problem, understand its scope, and then analyze the risk it represents. And then from there, you can go on to defining how you're going to communicate to people who are looking to you for direction th throughout this situation. To, to do that, um, to understand the problem, I wanted to break it down some more because I think it's, you know, this, this touches a lot more than Ill, the illness itself, the physical illness, I think it goes a lot more into um, a different types of crises. So I think there are six different kinds of issues we're dealing with right now. Uh, the first one is the most obvious. This is a public health issue. This is that's self-explanatory. We know that uh, there's a lot of local business disruption. Of course, everything has shut down just about. Um, then we have a crisis of information. There's conflicting information. We don't know who to believe. We don't know who to trust. Um, and it's not consistent and it's not always factual. Then the other issue we're dealing with is the ripple effect to the global economy. That is another crisis that we have to deal with. The next one is government and leadership from the federal level. Uh, there's a lot of confusion it, that kind of goes hand in hand with information. A lot of people just don't know uh, who to trust. And then finally, we have a social crisis. We have people who are a bit extreme and they're buying and hoarding everything and, and going a, a little bit too far. And then you have the folks who are not taking it seriously enough. Um, and they, you know, are turning into what folks are calling the super spreaders. So we have a social issue. You know, some people still don't believe it's a real thing, unfortunately. So all of these six things are issues that need to be tackled in your communications. Um, the public health, the local business, the information, the global economy, the government, and social. So this is these are all things that need to be kept in mind as you communicate to your staff and whoever else may be listening to you. So really quickly, before I get into diving into un how to understand your audience, I want to share with you the three questions that I ask no matter what kind of communication I'm doing, because I think it's imperative to nail these three things before you decide on what you're going to say. And the first question is always who is in the audience. In this situation, it's obvious it's your staff, it's your employees, it's any stakeholders you may have. The second question is what do I want them to feel and do after I speak. So what do I need? What do I want them to feel and what do I want them to do? The third question is, OK, so what do I need to say in order to drive that action? So once you understand your audience, determine what it is you actually want them to do and feel that will determine what you have to say in order to drive that action. So I just wanted to insert that very quickly and now move on to um, better understanding the audience. The next slide I want to show you is actually some screenshots that I pulled from an Edelman uh, resource, special reports specifically about the coronavirus. And this one talks about 
you know, the worry that people have. Um, and this, this was based on a survey of 10,000 people from different parts of the world, and these are the numbers that they came back with. So 74% of the respondents worry about the information that they're getting is fake news, being fake news. Um, next down the line, 45% have a hard time finding information that's reliable and trustworthy. And the, the biggest number is more people want to hear from scientists. They want to hear less from politicians and more than more um, from scientists. So, so where does that leave you as a business owner or a business executive? Well, the next thing that was really, really interesting that came up in this is after scientists and doctors and CDC officials, the next trusted uh, group um, after all the healthcare folks would be employers and CEOs. People are trusting their employers and CEOs before they trust the news media, before they trust local government, and before they trust journalists. So that is a very crucial and valuable piece of information, in my opinion, that you know, after the scientists, doctors, and everybody else has spoken, really people are looking to their businesses, to, to their, their companies for, for guidance. You know, there's a lack of trust in government. There's a lack of, there's a com confusion with media. So they're looking to their companies. And the next, um, you know, this next slide re kind of reiterates that, you know, people are looking at, to, they want to hear from hospitals and doctors. They want to hear from national health authorities, the well health, World Health Organization, local health authorities. And then my employer, they want to hear from you before they hear from insurance companies. They want to hear from you before they hear from schools. They want to hear from their employers before they hear from the government and, and, and business businesses in general, and definitely before the media. So again, I think that's a very valuable piece of knowledge, a uh, valuable statistic to take to heart. Um, so what we want to do in a time like this uh, is to maintain trust and if unfortunately you lost some from some communication blunder to restore it but really what we want to do is maintain and ideally boost trust and the best ways that you can do that is to number one fulfill promises uh the second way is to meet expectations and the third way is to, is to find ways to still live out your company values so Fulfill promises is, is self-explanatory. So to the best of your ability, if you say that you're going to do something for your staff and your customers, by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, meet expectations. What do we mean by that? We mean that, you know, a month ago, the expectations were different than they are today. The, 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 a month ago, folks really weren't taking it as seriously as, as they should have. Um, so if national, big events and conferences and all of these things were still going on. But at some point, particularly around the NBA, when they decided to suspend the rest of the season, that changed the expectations. That shifted the expectation to large gatherings should cease. Then we saw you know, other sporting leagues follow suit. And then we saw national conferences and, and concerts follow suit. So that the expectation then was that there's no large gatherings and it has gone from 250 people to 50 people to now less than 10 people. And really it should just be the people in your household. So for those businesses that can go without employees coming in, your, 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 your staff is going to trust you more if you meet the expectation at large that people shouldn't be going into the office right now. And obviously that's easier for some businesses than it is for others. But keep that in mind. And, you know, finally, again, find a way to live out your values as a company. One thing I see a lot as I monitor different social media and different things like that is people don't want to hear about sales right now. They don't want to hear about 70% off this or 80% off that. They want to hear something more substantive. And it's understandable businesses are hemorrhaging money left and right and you want to do what you can to get revenue, but your revenue, your sales are going to suffer for you, from you sounding tone deaf. So it, it, in any way, find a way to communicate your value, your, your, what your company stands for, and the sales will come, you know, that the sales will come. A good example is Starbucks giving top coffee to um, healthcare workers and people on the front line. They didn't have to advertise the sales. So people who are have to still go to work and may not be in healthcare, they may think of Starbucks and get their coffee there. Um, of course, this works with larger businesses better than it does with small ones, but there has to be a unique way that you can say the right thing 
and still generate some revenue if you can without sounding tone deaf and out of touch. So what you want to do also to continue to feel promise, fulfill promises and meet expectations is deliver consistent, reassuring virtual communication. Um, it's very important that you use empathetic language, um, you know, powerful words, optimistic language, uh, language that shows strength even in a time of, you know, upheaval. So we have seen an excellent, um, uh, we've seen an excellent demonstration of that from Governor Cuomo in New York. You know, he doesn't always get everything right and who can in a situation like this, but this is the kind of leadership that people are hungry for. This is the kind of stability that people are clamoring for. Uh, another great example would be the CEO of Marriott International, who I wrote about on a recent blog. Um, again, just honest, empathetic, acknowledging the, the hard truth, but also being optimistic about the future and being strong and being visible uh, and giving people essentially what they want. It's, it's, it's clear from the research that people want to see and hear from business leaders more than they want to hear from the journalists, more than they want to hear from politicians. So this is a, an incredible opportunity to uh, build trust, maintain trust, restore it, and any of those things. People are judging businesses on how they act right now. And the companies that are coming off tone deaf and out of touch and, and, and going viral for all of the wrong ways are the ones who are focusing on profits over people. You know, there's no nice way to say that. There's, there's absolutely no nice way to say it. Leaders who are telling people and, and showing them, you know, and, and visualizing how things are going to get better, how they're going to restore things, how they are going to reboot and pivot and do whatever is necessary to save as many people as possible, you know, within the company and while doing the best they can to tackle a very unfamiliar situation. People want to hear and feel protected at this time. So that's one of, you know, the best ways to approach this within you know, as far as the, what language you should use. Use visual and text communications. It's I know that video is all the rage right now and a lot of people are kind of zoomed out and this is going to go on for as long as possible. So it's important that you use not just visual, but text as well, because people absorb information in different ways. So while video is important, please don't forget plain text. Um, it's definitely the time now more than ever, leaders need to embrace social media, that the time for folks who, who don't want to use it for whatever reason that 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 has to take a back seat because it isn't about you and it's not about your preferences right now it is about the people who are looking to you to fulfill needs and then one other thing you know that I want to mention I hate to mention but it's it's a it's a part of the reality so I have to mention it is thinking ahead of how you're going to announce the passing of an employee um, several companies and organizations have already had to do this. So again, I, I, I hate to bring it up. No one wants to think of it. No one wants to think of losing someone who's a part of the team. But the fact of the matter is it, it very well may happen. So it's important to think ahead. Um, to de develop some kind of template or at least some thoughts on how you would structure the announcement of the death of a colleague. And then finally, just really remember that we are all in this together. Your employees don't want to feel betrayed. They want you to keep it honest. They want you to feel, they want to feel like you're within reach, that you care, that they're not just a replaceable, you know, number, that they're just not a, you know, non-essential. We have learned more than ever right now that there really is no such thing as a non-essential employee. Everybody is necessary. Everybody is needed in some way or form to keep the engine of our economy growing. growing. So we're in this together. And I know as leaders, executives, business owners, and what have you, there's so much pressure on you right now. You have got to stay strong. You've got to find your own sense of ho your own uh, place of hope and, you know, peace that you, that from which you can draw, that you can then pass out to the people who are looking to you for guidance. Now is the time for intellectual agility. Now is the time to get creative in how you message people and try to touch people in different ways. It's, it's a time where you've got to manage dynamic expectations, but you're definitely up to the task. You can do it. There's help if you need help with communications. You know, we are here. I have a team of people who are here, but this is not necessarily about me. This is really for you. Um, I spent a lot of time in this space helping people under normal circumstances. So I wanted to find a way to hopefully be of value to you in not so normal circumstances. So if there's anything that I've said here 
um, that resonated with you. If you want to think more about, go ahead and send me an email. I'll write back as soon as possible. I'm here. That That's pretty much all I've got. I hope that you have found this extremely helpful and try to have as great a week as you can.